Hey guys, welcome back. This is Joel Perriman and uh, I am the Financial Planner Student. So today we're going to go through money versus happiness. Are you just chasing the money? Uh, today I want to talk to you guys really about understanding uh, the, I guess the contrast between just chasing the money and being happy with what you have. And also, of course, um, being able to understand that Money doesn't create happiness, however, can give you a degree of happiness that you need to be able to become self-actualized and self-aware so that you can be even happier. Um, so, I want to start off really quickly with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you don't know Maslow, um, he essentially was a, I guess, a researcher in the field of psychology, um, probably back in the 50s. Uh, I, I can't exactly give you a date of when he was... Um, very, it was very controversial at the time anyway. I think it was back in the 1950s, maybe even l earlier or maybe a little bit later. Again, I can't know exactly. But Maslow's hierarchy of needs essentially states, uh, and it is based in a pyramid, so if you want to look it up, it's really cool. It's really interesting to read up on as well. But essentially states that you need to be able to get to a point first that you have all the basic necessities before you can move on to the next rung or go up the pyramid, as you could say. The goal of Maslow's hierarchy is to essentially become self-actualized or self-aware or transcendent, um, which is taken a little bit from Buddhism um, and many other uh, religious philosophies and spiritual philosophies as well, I, could, um, I guess you could say. Uh, so... What is the basic necessities that you need? Essentially, you just need to be able to have breathable air. You need to be able to have, um, I guess, shelter, food. Uh, you need to be able to have all of those fresh water, all of those necessities. Those are the necessities that you need to live. Yeah, makes sense. If you can build those foundations and you can move on to the next thing, the next, which is safety and the needs of being able to feel secure. Um, which is really important as well, because if you don't have a roof over your head, then I could imagine that you wouldn't be, and this is dependent on personal circumstance, of course, some people are happy without a roof over their head, some are not, um, but I could imagine that majority of people are happier with a, lo a roof over their head, okay, especially at night when they're trying to sleep. So those are safety needs, those are needs that you are trying to accrue and develop so that you can move on to the next rung again. So once you have the basic needs, fresh water, fresh food, you have shelter over your head, which is a part of your safety needs, security, um, security in your finances and stuff too, that is when, and this is the thing, it is a step-by-step -step basis, that is when you can move on to the next step according to Maslow, which is uh, love, belonging, and becoming a part of society and be able to give back to society, which is really cool. So, let's really have a look at the first two, okay? You need money to be able to actually get past the first two rungs of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You need money for shelter, you need money for food, you need money for water. So, to a degree, money does create happiness. If it wasn't for money, I wouldn't have this jumper. I wouldn't have, and uh, a bit of a shout out to B-Box, by the way, which is one of my mate's uh, newest and latest clothing brands as well. If you want to check it out, check out B-Box. Um, bit of a plug for you there, Brunner. Uh, and of course, um, I wouldn't have this roof over my head either if I didn't have money. So really, really important, okay, guys, is that you understand that you need to make sure that you have money to set yourself up to be financially secure and financially independent before you can move on to the next thing, um, which is becoming a bigger part of society and be able to give back to society a little bit more. Um, and really creating the happiness that you really desire, which is to have a long-lasting relationship, which is to be able to have um, happiness amongst your family and friends and, and really all of those things, which are really important. And because we are human, we are homo sapiens, we are social creatures. So that third rung of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is very important. Then once you've got that, once you've got the basic necessities, 
once you've been able to then create a family and you have uh, a little bit more of a social standing, the next part is esteem and creating power or standing, essentially, a part of Maslow's hierarchy. And then once you have that, it is becoming self-actualized. Now, the top two, we don't need to worry about as much. Most people, majority of their lives spend... Uh, 90% of their lives working on the first three rungs, okay? Um, so you don't need to worry about the first two uh, unless, of course, you have great ambitions to do something, to, to give back to society or things like that. Um, but I just wanted you to realize Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how that relates to money because you need money to be able to do those two things. So that will give you a degree of happiness. And it's really easy to do to become financially independent and to give you that security financially. I even talk about it in one of my previous, um, oh, in one of my videos actually, which is taking back control of your finances uh, and talk about how you can really reduce um, a few things in your life and how you can really live so that that way you can have that financial independence and security. So if you want to check out that video, really important, check it out in the videos below. Um, otherwise, that is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But then we go all the way on to the other side of things. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the top two to three rungs are your general population. Um, but really, I want to understand how is it the money and happiness, how do they correlate? And yes, if you have money, to a degree, you can be happy. But what happens when you have an abundance of money? What happens when you are a top-earning CEO, for instance? Well, I can guarantee you that that the money, the abundance of money, not necessarily gives you happiness. The esteem that you get, the power that you get from having so much money and so much control over so many other people's lives doesn't necessarily bring you happiness. In fact, research states that CEOs of bigger companies and stuff like that, they generally speaking um, suffer from depression and anxiety at double the standard rate of the general population. Rather than, and I believe 20% is roughly one in five people suffer from depression and anxiety. Normally, if you're a CEO, that is two in five. So at 40% and most people, because of the nature of depression and anxiety and how people don't generally like to talk about it, um, they believe in CEOs is more than that. They believe it's even 50% or higher, um, which is crazy. A one in two ratio would be really disappointing, of course. So that says to me that money doesn't actually really bring you happiness. If you have an abundance of money, then that itself doesn't bring you happiness. So what is going to give you that happiness? It's finding that middle ground, that place in between where you are working at a place that you love or you are working doing the job that you love. It is a time where you are spending the most, um, I guess, time doing the things you love as well. Because as a CEO, you don't have as much time to be doing the things you love. You have... Uh, little time, in fact. You have all pressures on you from hundreds, thousands, even um, millions maybe of shareholders trying to make sure that you are hitting bonuses all the time and things like that. Whereas there's the opposite, the flip side of that, where you don't have enough money and you aren't happy because you don't have a shelter over your head. So you need to find the middle ground for you. You need to figure out what you want in life. You need to figure out what sort of lifestyle you want. So you need to ask these hard questions. I, in fact, love talking about how to figure out um, essentially the legacy that you want to leave behind because that's really important. And I, uh, I turn this to Gary V because this is really, really cool. He says this a lot um, when asked, what are the most inspiring words that you can give me in three words? And he says this, you are going to die. Oh, I think it's more like you will die, um, which is done in three words. He shares that a lot. And it's really empowering to think about it because you know you are going to die. It is human nature. It is a part of nature that and the, the circle of life that we all live, breathe, and die. So 
What legacy will you leave behind? If you were to die today, this is one of my favorite questions. If you were to die today, what would you leave behind? What are you okay with leaving behind as well? Like, if you don't know that, and you don't know, if you're just going through life, you probably won't be happy. But if you are giving purpose to your life, And if you are able to leave something behind, whether that's just for your kids, whether that's for your family, whether that's for hundreds of thousands of people, I think that if you ask that question, that is going to be where you can really create the happiness that you want to understand what sort of legacy that you want to leave behind, Um, whether that's monetary legacy, whether that's um, a legacy such as, um, well, look at the the greats of history. Look at Jesus Christ, for instance, and how he has influenced hundred. He was the first influencer, essentially. And then, of course, there's um, Buddha and the great religious leaders, etc. And then you look at Mother Teresa, um, Gandhi. All of those type of people have left behind legacies as well, but not monetary legacies, legacies of the spirit. Then you could be looking at Like there's so many different aspects of life that you could look into. So that's what I want you to understand, all right, is money doesn't bring you happiness. It can bring you a degree of happiness. However, it is not the be all and end all. So you shouldn't be chasing it unless you know what type of legacy you want to leave behind, unless you know what your ambitions and goals are in life, okay? Because becoming the top ranking CEO doesn't necessarily mean that you will be happy. In fact, uh, there is a a bit of a, um, a a very short story, a bit of parable, in fact, um, which I was told from a, a really good friend and colleague a few years back now. And it's about a, a fisherman and a CEO. And I'll leave on this note because this is a really cool story. Essentially, the CEO comes by his pretty much got a a weekend getaway, essentially, and he's gone to this lake, and he sees that there's a fisherman, and he walks over down the pier, and he sees the fisherman is bringing quite a catch. And as a CEO, you see opportunity. You see the fact that you could really make this a business or an enterprise. And the CEO says, have you ever thought about opening up your own fish, uh, your own, um, getting your own fisher um, trawler, you you know, a little fishing boat essentially so that you can start bringing in more fish and make more money and the fisherman's like "Mm, no not really and the ceo started raking off this spiel about being able to start with one boat and building up to 10 boats and then creating a fleet so that you can really start bringing in a heap of fish and a heap of money and you could literally become a millionaire over the next five years if you did all of this, this, and this. And the CEO is rattling this off and the fisherman was just sitting there with his straw in his mouth, fishing rod out, and just sitting back and relaxing. And he's like, okay, so if I do this over five to 10 years and work really, really hard, what do I do then? And the CEO is like, well, once you've done that, once you've made all the money, you'll be able to spend all the time with your family. You'll be able to holiday for however long you want. You'll be able to do whatever you want. And you'll be able to go out onto a lake with a yacht and just sit down and do some fishing if you want. You could do whatever it is that you want. And the fisherman was sitting back and he was like, so you're telling me that if I worked really, really hard for five to 10 years, made all this money, I would be able to do exactly what I am doing right now. And there it is. The fact of the matter is, you don't need to make all the money to be happy. Sometimes you just need to live the simple life. If that is what you want, of course. The fisherman, the the CEO didn't ask him what he wanted in life. The fisherman, all he wanted was to spend time with his family. He just wanted to make as much money from the fish so he could put food on the table because that is what he enjoyed. And he loved enjoying, he literally just sat there in the morning, made some fish, went to the market, sold the fish, took a fish or two down for his family so that they could eat. And he was able to spend most of the time with his family. And that's all he ever wanted. And the CEO came in and was like, you should do all of this, this and this to make all the money. But 
in hindsight, in the end, for the fisherman, it was just going to land him right back where he was. Why do all of that hard work when he already had everything he ever needed? So guys, I'll leave you on that note. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click that notification bell. Really, really important on that one. And of course, like this video and share it around because I know that there are people out there who need to listen to this video. All right, guys, I'll leave it there. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.